Welcome, this is my video for uh, section 7.2, Connecting Intercepts and Linear Factors. So, here we go. We're going to analyze and sketch a quadratic function, that's the overall objective. And we're going to do three things here. We're going to rewrite the equation into standard form, and then we're going to determine the roots of the equation, and then we're going to determine the vertex of the equation. And then we're actually going to sketch, so we're going to do four things. I've got four different slides here. So first, we're going to do what's underlined in red, which is rewrite the equation into standard form. Well, that means we're going to expand the binomial. So we're going to multiply x plus 1 times x minus 4. So we do that. Negative 1 times, uh, I'm sorry, negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. Negative 4 times x is negative 4x. Then x times 1 is positive 1x, and x times x is 1x squared. We add the like terms, so we end up with x squared minus 3x is minus 4. And then, that's times 2. So this guy here simplifies to be that guy in standard form. Then we multiply by 2. That means we distribute. So y equals 2x squared minus 6x's minus 8 ones. There's our equation written into standard form. Bam. Now, next thing, we're going to determine the roots of the equation. So here we go, determine the roots of the equation. I picked that, that next because that's easier than the vertex because this is given to us in factored form. So if 2 times something times something equals 0, right? So finding the roots means we set the equation equal to 0. Then we have the zero product property. So either x plus 1 equals 0 or x minus 4 equals 0. And we add negative 1 to both sides here. That means x equals negative 1. We add positive 4 to both sides in this equation. x equals 4. So notice... We check it. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0. 0 times 2 is 0. 0 times whatever this guy is. Actually, let's figure it out. Negative 1, negative 4 is negative 5. But 0 times negative 5 is 0. So, boom, this guy works. Check. We're on it. Put 4 in. 4 minus 4 is 0. 0 times uh, 4 plus 1 would be 5. Times 2 would be 10. That 10 times 0, though, would be 0. Boom. So, this guy works. Those are our two roots. Bam. Last, determine the vertex. Okay, we've got two ways to do the vertex here. Okay, one way is from standard form. Actually, you know, let's do them both like this. So from standard form, which is that multiplied out guy, that's going to be the 2x squared minus 6x minus 8, I believe. Okay, and then from factored form, from right here. So standard form, 2x squared minus 6x minus 8. We're going to um, find the vertex, and that's going to be negative b over 2a, so the opposite of b is positive 6, and then a is 2, so 2 times 2 is 4, so that makes 4 right there, so 6 over 4 is 3 halves. Or, from factored form, we know the roots are negative 1 and positive 4, so we add those up and divide by 2 to find the point halfway between them. Negative 1 plus 4 is 3, 3 divided by 2 is 3 halves. So either way, both of which are pretty simple, we get that the x corner of the vertex is 3 halves. Now, since this is a fraction, and not a nice integer or a whole number, right, then it's not so simple for most of you guys finding the y coordinate. So here we go. We put uh, 3 halves in for x. So we're going to have 3 halves, so we put it into this. This equation right here, bam. So 3 halves squared times 2, and then negative 6 times 3 halves, and then minus 8. And then here's all the calculations right here. So 3 halves squared, that's 3 halves times 3 halves times the 2, boom. So this is 2 times 3 halves times 3 halves. The sweet part here is 2 cancels out, minus negative 6 times 3 halves. Well, 2 goes into negative 6 there, negative 3 times. And so we have 3 times 3, which is 9 over 2. That's 9 halves. We have negative th 6 times th 3. What did I do here? I should just did that as negative 9. I left it as halves. I see. Okay. Yeah. Because here's the deal. With 9 halves, we can't get rid of the halves. So, 
we're just going to leave this in half. So this is 9 over 2. And this is negative 6 times 3, which is negative 18 over 2. And then negative 8 is the same as negative 16 divided by 2. So we have 9 minus 18, which is negative 9. Negative 9 and negative 16 is negative 25 over 2. So boom, there we go. So there's our vertex. X is 3 halves, Y is negative 25 halves. Now, that was kind of steep for most people. <clears throat> Here's another way to find the vertex. Is instead of using standard form to substitute the three halves in, we could substitute into this form right here. Now, for some of you, that's going to be pretty much just as complicated. But here we go. So we have 2 times x plus 1. So x plus 1, x is 3 halves plus 1. Well, what is 1? 1 is actually 2 halves times x minus 4. Well, x is 3 halves. And then what is 4? Well, x4 is actually negative 8 halves. So we have y equals 2 times 3 plus 2, which is 5 halves, times 3 minus 8, which is negative 5 halves. And here's where it gets magical. Hey. This 2 cancels one of these 2's, whichever one, doesn't matter. So we're left with 5 times negative 5, which is negative 25, over 2. Well, so either way, that's how we get the vertex. Now, so here's what we know, ready to sketch. We know the equation in standard form is whatever we said, like uh, y equals 2x squared minus 6x minus 8. We know the roots are negative 1 and 4. We know the vertex is 3 halves, common negative 25 halves. And so I don't really care for the standard form, but this is the important stuff for sketching the graph. So here we go. The vertex is 3 halves, common negative 25 halves. The one root is negative 1, comma 0. The other root is 4, comma 0. There's our three points. We connect the dots, put the arrows on the end of the, the curve there, the parabola, and bam! There's our sketch. Whoa ho. Look at that, baby. Woo. And notice here, the thing I didn't ask that should be easy to figure out is the domain. Well, it's a parabola, which the arrows here mean. It goes up forever, but it also means that it always expands to the left forever. And same thing over here. This always expands to the right forever, just more and more slowly. And so the domains are real numbers from negative infinity out to positive infinity. Bam. Easy. Hey, that's the domain for every parabola. I don't care if it opens upwards or downwards. That's always the domain for a parabola. Now, here's the thinking part, right? That's always different for almost every parabola. The range. What's the range? That's all the values that y can be. Well, notice this. The lowest part of the graph is negative 25 over 2. So, negative 25 halves. Also known as negative 12.5. You can see that from the graph right here. Here's negative 12. Each box is uh, 1, so this is negative 10. Two boxes down is negative 11. Two boxes down is negative 12. So two boxes down here would be negative 13. So this is negative 12.5. So the range is from negative 25 halves, or negative 12.5 if you do decimals, which I'm not particularly fond of. We're going to use rational numbers in this course. And then it goes up forever, so then it goes towards infinity. So there's the range of this guy, easily said from the graph. Or from the vertex, and notice here, x squared, x times x is positive x squared, so we know that's the 2x squared. Since it's the positive 2x squared, we know that this guy opens upward. So this is the minimum value for the function. There we go. Now, here's another problem. Rewrite the equation in the standard form. Notice this is the multiplier's negative 2. So we know this guy is going to open downwards. Whatever the vertex is, this is going to be the maximum point on the graph, and this guy is going to go down from there. That's what the negative 2 here is telling me already. We would call that, by the way, the vertical stretch. So the number times the function is the vertical stretch. And the fact that it's a negative says there's a reflection involved, so the mother function gets flipped downwards. It goes from being up 
to going down and it goes with the stretch at two so it goes down twice as fast as the mother function bam here we go so we multiply that x squared plus 6x plus 5 multiply everybody by, ne by negative 2 there's the same equation in standard form y equals negative 2x squared negative 12x negative 10 the x squared is negative right the coefficient is negative that says it opens downward when I draw the graph then I do the roots x plus 5 equals 0 that means x equals negative 5 x plus 1 set that equal to 0 that means x is negative 1 those are my two roots and then we're going to take the <coughs> average of those so negative 5 and negative 1 is by average I mean arithmetic mean of course so we add them up, negative 5 and negative 1 is negative 6, we divide by 2, negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. And then we plug negative 3 in for x. So notice here I did this, I did the factored form when I plugged in to find y. Negative 3 plus 5 is 2, and then negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2, and then times the first negative 2. So that all makes positive 8. So here we go, our vertex is negative 3 comma 8. The roots are negative 5 and negative 1. Let's get rid of that. So the roots are negative 5, negative 1. And by roots, it's the x-intercept. That's the value for x when y is 0. y is 0. And then the vertex is negative 3, 8. And this guy opens downwards. And it goes that way forever and ever. Amen. Okay, now... That means the domain is our real number, and the range is from 8 down to negative infinity. So here's the only thing, interval notation. In fact, let me do the domain first, because even though it's easy, I want you to practice doing it. So it's all real numbers. That means from negative infinity to positive infinity. By the way, whenever we do domain or range, we have to list it from the least value to the greatest value. Okay, so for domain, that goes from the left side of the graph to the right side. And for range, that goes from the least value to the lowest value. The... Uh, most value is the greatest value is the highest value. So in other words, this is negative infinity up to and including Mr. 8. And that should be closed because that includes the 8. I think I screwed that up on the last one. Yes, this should be closed here. This is negative 25 halves, including it, right? Because we're actually at that value and up to infinity. And you can't include infinity or negative infinity because they're not numbers, they're not defined. So you can't say go up to and stop there because they don't stop, they're not defined values. Okay, all that deep pre -cal stuff going on. So there we go, there's our domain and range. And we've drawn the graph. And we did two problems, one parabola that opens upwards, one that opens downwards. And again, we can tell right away because hey, when the leading coefficients is negative, it opens in the negative direction with the leading coefficients positive. The parabola has to open in the positive direction. There's a deep math reason for that that I'll probably explain at another date. Okay, so that concludes the lecture for section 7.2. If this did not make sense to you, you should probably come see me for tutoring. Welcome to Mass C, Quadratics. We be getting deep. No way around it. That's just part of the deal here. Okay. Other than that, I hope you have a good day, man. Later.